First things first, man. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Good. Well, what I want to start with is, uh, before we talk about your latest record and the music now, is um, your previous record. How do you look back at it now that you've completed the, the fourth? Uh, Melophobia? Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, with each record there's things that you learn throughout the process that um, hopefully you continue to carry throughout your life and then there's things that you learn that maybe you shouldn't have done or that maybe something that you grew past and you're glad to leave it in the past. And so there's a, there's a couple things with that record that I'm happy to leave behind but a lot of, a lot of what we do in that record um, are things that I would like to continue to revisit in, in approach, not necessarily in sound or, sure. or style or anything like that. And, uh, well, we'll get to this uh, because I believe that this is in terms of songwriting very, uh, very much so, but what was one of the things that you felt uh, comfortable with leaving behind? Um, <clears throat> Perhaps a, maybe um, a bit too polished of a sound, um, and also when we mix the record, you know, in music today there's very much this uh, this volume war. But the problem is when you mix a record and master it very loud, you start to compress the sound. So you lose a lot of the life, the energy, the space that's in the, in the songs. And, um, you know, just to be mindful of things like that so that it sounds great, um, as well as has, you know, you want it to be contemporarily, to be, to be um, you want it to be loud. You want it to have attack and sure. those kind of things, but, um, yeah, and then uh, in terms of songwriting and, and, and the lyrics, it it was somewhat of a, a change for you, the uh, melophobia. Yeah. So so can you quickly kind of uh, describe what you went through? Yeah, I think just with each record, you you're trying to get rid of um, creative baggage, uh, which I think. Uh, dampens dampens the the potency of the material like um, like feeling some kind of obligation to stay true to any genre specific sound right. or, or lyrical approach especially since a lot of those uh, personas are based on uh, a commercial approach whether it's acknowledged or not um, by the genre <laughs> sure. um, but yeah I think when we were younger put a lot of stock in persona I believed very much in the persona and um, it it partially destroyed the cathartic experience um, for for us and also um, At that time, it felt like the conviction was honest, mm -hmm. but I don't think it had longevity in its honesty. Mm -hmm. And so, um, on Melophobia, we really started to reach for a more transparent uh, posture. Um, was there a turning point from where you were uh, going from this, this kind of uh, character to, to, to this transparency? Yeah. Um, I had heard um, I was listening to, to Etta James and there was a song called Almost Persuaded mm -hmm. and the song, you know, she talks about, she goes to this, this uh, dance or, or uh, dinner hall or whatever and she sees this tall, dark, beautiful man they have a, a chemistry, there's a sparkle in his eye. She. Um, she, she starts to have feelings for him, he sits down, they're talking, she's falling for him. They begin to dance and she's right about to kiss him and as she, right before she kisses him, she says, I catch a glimpse of my wedding ring. 
And so it's this very honest song about adultery. Sure. And it just like knocked the wind out of me. And I thought, you know, after hearing a song this brutally honest, I was like, I can never write songs the same again. Um, and similar kind of experience with Paul Simon lyrics. Part of what makes it, make his lyrics feel so poetic is their honesty. Mm -hmm. It's like this vaguely specific honest honesty that like has a pretty universal translation. Was this a difficult thing to do? To, to be that honest about, about what you were experiencing? It gets harder and harder. Okay. Because, uh, well, the, 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 in, in to Tell Me uh, That I'm Pretty, you kind of continued this trend. So, so why was it important for you to, to be honest and to, to reflect on, on your own life more in the lyrics? Because I'm not a good liar, it's not working for me. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work for me. So mm -hmm. um, I feel that, you know, I can't ask people to believe in something I don't believe in myself. And, um, I, you know, I think I, I, ha I had a thought and I was like, you know, I want to make music that when people, I want to write songs that people hear when they're young and want played at their funerals. Yeah. And, I, and if you want to write music that has that kind of impact on yourself and hopefully on others, I think that honesty is the only way. I also think that um, music or any form of arts, at their barest, um, their, their, uh, Their barest form, at their barest form, it's a means of communication. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we we seem to burden this by um, stacking all these elitist titles onto it, like genius or poetic or intellectual. Or, and so, what we end up doing is trying to project these images, and it it um, it destroys everything that's great about creativity. So. That's part of it too, is that I think that uh, just trying to stick to what the purpose is, which is to communicate. And, well, you, you mentioned that it now it, it, it gets even harder. So, because you went through it on melophobia, how come it's harder now? Um, because the... Uh, because it gets, it, it gets to a point where um, sometimes the songs are a little too close to you, you know, like if you have any deep-seated self-hatred, <laughs> um, it's pretty easy to uh, dislike the material purely because there's too much of yourself in the songs. There's, n there's no longer that, that, um, that safeguard mm -hmm. or that cushion right. of, of like, like a a created character or whatever. And well, you've, you've spoken openly about uh, the fact that depression was part of the, of the influence on the record. Yeah. So is that kind of what you were talking about? That, that sometimes when, when you write the lyric down, it, it's too close to, to, to you and you feel, well, maybe I shouldn't put this on there? Sometimes, yeah. Um, also, just like, um, it's easy to hide behind a character and to be pleased with a character that's based off of something that you know yourself you already like because it's not you. Sure. So when you, when you stand in your own like skin, um, it's pretty easy to to dislike it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So so in that sense, would you cens censor yourself? Um. Yeah, I think we censor ourselves all day, every day, all day long. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just depends on what you mean by censorship. You know, um, legalistic could be like uh, a religious person who is, uh, uh, who like is ruling over their conduct with, with like a legalistic approach, or it could also be like legalistic as in, um, you couldn't possibly be an artist unless you do this, sure. or you have these beliefs or this approach. You know, 
So there's these two worlds of legalism, mm -hmm. and, and they're both firmly rooted in censorship.